Uh, hi everyone, this is Satish Shuri. We are, uh, we are taking uh, um, the fluorides chapter, addition and removing of fluoride, um, which is, means fluoridation and defluoridation part, which is present in model 4, this is the last bit. Okay, so here what happens here is the fluoride, it is very much essential as well as it is, you can say it's a blessing and disblessing also. So, excess amount of fluoride content is in disblessing and it should have a minimum quantity if you don't have minimum quantity also there are certain problems if you have an excess quantity also there are certain problems so minimum quantity that should not exceed 1 mg per liter if it is not then when what, what you are doing here is you are adding fluorides to the water that is called as an fluoridation and you should not call cross beyond 1 to 1.5 mg per liter defluoridation take place when there is an uh, what you can say a high amount of uh, fluoride is present and you are removing that fluoride from that water so that is called as an defluoridation so next we are seeing about fluoridation so <clears throat> fluoridation in this part what happens there is in water uh, in in few regions okay the fluoride content will be less so what we are doing is you are adding fluoride to that and optimum dosage should not be less than one uh, means uh, it should, the fluoride content in water should not be less than 1 mg per liter if it is less than 1 mg per liter what happens there is there is a dental crisis okay especially in the children's itself so what happens during the formation of uh, teeth in the children's due to fluoride uh, there is a scarcity of fluoride consumption in water it lead to weaker tooth enamel okay and it leads to decay in the tooth so this is a major problem in the children's itself okay due to reduction hardness okay uh, the simulated bone formation is not be done properly especially in the older uh, age people itself okay so that is also one of the major reasons now the optimum dosage of the fluoride concentration should be achieved nearly 1 mg per liter so when you add in fluoride to the water okay to the especially for public supply we call it as an fluoridation and it's an artificial way of adding the uh, adding the fluorides to the water itself okay especially in western countries there are many countries where the fluoride content is less okay so those countries what they are doing there is they are adding fluoride to the water okay <clears throat> and the compounds which are added uh, to supplement the fluoride are sodium fluoride sodium silico fluoride etc so these are the two components okay and there should be a precaution that should be taken place so that there should not be an excess fluoride content that should be added in the water if you add it there is a spotting effect there is a declaration of uh, teeth okay so it should not be excess more than 50 to 150 mg per liter or you can say it, it leads to an, uh, um, a skin irritation effect deformation of bones and other skeletal uh, abnormality okay so the adding the fluoride content in water we call it as an uh, fluoridation now we speak about uh, defluoridation especially in india and bangladesh uh, region it's a huge problem itself because uh, due to outburst of population uh, we are purely dependent in some region on underground water table especially when you consider in karnataka and all kolar uh, chitrurga uh, Raichur, Ballari, Gulbarga, few parts of Bagalkot, they purely depend on underground water table. There is a continuous exploitation of underground water table. The fluoride contained, the fluoride uh, is hidden as a mineral beneath the earth's surface. When you extract the water, it, it comes through that water itself. Okay. And especially in human body, the, the fluoride contain, uh, the, what do you say, the fluoride enters through the body with the drinking water itself. Okay. And uh, fluoride is very much affiliated, uh, means very much attractive towards uh, calcium uh, phosphate, uh, which is present in the bone, okay, which leads to dental fluoresis, 
okay skeleton fluoresces non skeleton fluoresces means it, there may be deformation in bone or there may there may remain excess uh, bone growth itself okay and which causes major problem uh, to human being itself okay there is a skin problem also and these are the various method where uh, the defluoridation take place where first one is absorption by activated uh, alumina ion exchange uh, process nalgonda technique and reverse osmosis the first one absorption by act activated alumina so it is nothing but what we do here is we pass the water through an granular bed like activated alumina bone char or activated carbon or activated oxide okay and um, when you pass the water through that what happens there is especially which contain fluoride when you pa when you percolate the water through those bed okay the water comes out with def uh, means the water gets defluoridation or deflo flor defluoridation take place the activated alumina is excellent what you can say it's an excellent removal of uh, fluoride content itself okay the fluoride present is uh, highly selective with uh, um, sulfates and chlorides when you compare to an synth uh, what you can say synthetic uh, ions itself okay so it is very much attractive to sulfates and chlorides itself and even uh, means if there is an uh, acidic condition of water okay this method what it does it it provides an excellent way of removal of fluoride content okay and uh, in that bed when you back wash with an um, caustic soda itself okay there is a regeneration of activated alumina itself so no issue regarding that so this is a technique uh, of removing fluoride content from water excessive fluoride content in water itself by an activated alumina so next one the next one is nothing but it's an uh, ion uh, absorption method so when the water is been passed uh pass uh, pass through, uh, through an uh, strong base of uh, an uh, ion exchange resin like uh, chloride form okay the uh, the fluorides are been removed over here it is passed uh, through a bed of resin okay in a pressure vessel itself uh, like you can imagine an uh, pressure filter over there itself okay um now what happens here is okay so it is be uh, the fluoride and other ions like uh, other anions like uh, arsenic and uh, nitrate are exchanged with chloride ions okay they are been exchanged with chlor chloride ions here so chloride ions are released in water and there is an absorption of fluoride content please remember this one okay the chloride uh, ions of the resin thus are released in releasing chlorides into the water and absorbing fluorides into the resin over here okay and when there is an decrease uh, when there is an decreasing concentration of chlorides you can see okay so there is a cleaning or regeneration process take place and it is being done with the 5 to 10% of washing with uh, sodium chloride itself to that bed okay and there is a regeneration taking place okay so this is all about ion ex uh, ion uh, exchange absorption method itself next we see here regarding the nalgonda technique so is one of the common technique nalgonda technique it is not been invented in nalgonda itself but it is uh, this technique is founded in national environmental engineering and research institute nagpur in the year 1976 okay it's a very much simple technique we use here is in a fixed bed ion exchange process okay and here there is no uh, uh, no involvement of uh, regeneration of media because you are employing chemicals over here and this is a simple operation which can be done with the local labors or less skilled labors itself 
or ali uh, local uh, means uh, the labors which are available locally also they can uh, carry out this operation in this method not only the fluoride content is remo uh, removed but also the color odor turbidity bacteria content organic uh, contaminants are also been removed over here we use aluminum salt it is nothing but it's an alum okay for removing fluorides so how it take place so what we do is first the water is mixed adequately with lime or sodium carbonate and then they are mix it thoroughly itself then alum is been added and they are stirred for 10 minutes and allow it to settle it down for an hour itself there is a precipitation taking place the clear serpentine okay, which, con uh, which contained can say a permissible amount or can contain a less amount of fluoride is being drawn for a use itself you can see in the next part here there is a line diagram so first what we are doing there is they are mixing alum and fluoride they are allowing it to settle down there is a bleaching powder is been added the clear water which is which is being coming up over here and whatever the precipitated sludge is there they are taking taking it out over here and this super tank is been passed with the filter then they are been supplied to the community itself again what they say here is the addition of lime and sodium carbonates will ensure adequate uh, 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 alkalinity required for effective hydrolysis of aluminum salt so when there is a part of uh, there is a rise in uh, pH value definitely it kills the bacteria itself okay and the aluminum residue does not remain in the treated water over here okay the bleaching powder is added you can see here the bleaching powder is added prior with lime okay uh, with the lime prior and added of alumina to achieve a simultaneously disinfectant disinfection effect and thus it removes okay, what you can say uh, the bacteria or um, the biological growth itself okay from the system over here so this is all about nalgonda technique so in nalgonda technique what we are doing here is it's in a uh, fixed bed okay exchange process adopted it does not involve any regeneration process so like uh, in the previous case like uh, it was like an um, an ion exchange process it was nothing but uh, you need to wash it and you need to regenerate that media here you are not doing that thing over here you are not doing that thing over here okay so what chemicals you are adding your chemicals you are adding like alumina salt okay to remove the fluoride you are adding a lime or in sodium carbonate over here you are mixing it thoroughly so this is all about the nalgonda technique now we are seeing in reverse osmosis so reverse osmosis technique uh, we have studied it previously also okay so in reverse osmosis as well as nano filtration we have seen in uh, membrane chapter itself so what happens there is you are passing the water through an uh, semi membrane barrier okay which permits the clear water and there is a blockage to that salt content and in that salt content there will be an alumina itself sorry uh, there will be a fluoride content itself okay and that is been held back over there and this technique is very much cost effective technique it's a cheaper technique but due to maintenance problem and all service uh, serviceability of those membranes okay we can't use in the village itself okay uh, and this is more capable technique okay of rooming fluoride content without using a single chemical and you can refer with respect to nano uh, filtration as well as reverse osmosis in the membrane chapter itself there has been uh, um, clearly explained in those chapters and these are the some of the advantage and disadvantage of uh, various techniques over here you can see absorption with activated alumina 
ఆయన ఎక్స్చేంజ్ ప్రాసెస్ నాలుగు గంట అండ్ రివర్స్